TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. to exercise patience. We are going to talk about patience this episode. Patience is to restrain yourself from what you like or from what you, you want to do. To restrain yourself, to discipline yourself, to keep away from some things, to uh, have self-control. In the Quran, one of the pervasive attributes of a believer is a sabru, patience. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Al-Asri, Allah says to Al-Asri, Inna li-insan la fi khusru. By the time, mankind is in loss. Illa al-ladhina amanu, except for those who believe, wa amilu salihat, and do righteous deeds. Wa tawasawu bil-haq, and enjoin the truth on one another. Wa tawasawu bil-sabru, and enjoin patience on one another. If you look at this surah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four qualities of those who are going to attain success, those who are not going to lose. And the first one is faith. The second one is good conduct. The third one is to enjoy the truth. And the fourth one is patience, which means that to, su to succeed in this world and the hereafter requires patience. When you are not talking about patience, patience comes in different ways. Patience in the face of adversaries. Patience in the face of uh, uh, enemies, patience in worship, and patience in giving hope what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want. If you look at the first one, patience in the face of adversaries. You may have some enemies. Those that you believe are working against you, that is the nature of life. You know the story of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who are those who drove him out of his city in Mecca? He was born in, in Mecca and was driven out. By whom? By the closest people to him, his relatives. So which means that one may have some problem in one's family or from one's relatives. It's part of life. The life is punctuated with challenges. Yours may be coming from your family. But yet, as a Muslim, you have to discipline yourself. You must be steadfast in the, in the face of whatever the life presents to you. You must not let those who are against you make you to become a corrupt person. The Prophet ﷺ has told us, he said, لا يكم أحدكم إما None of you should be gullible. None of you should be gullible. None of you should be doing exactly what people are doing. يقولين أحسن الناس أحسن That will be saying that if people are doing what is right, I join them in doing that. وإن أساه أساته And if they are doing what is wrong, I also join them in doing that. ولكن وطينوا أنفسكم the Prophet said, but you as believers, discipline yourself. What do you know and fusakum in Ahsan and Nas when people are doing what is good? And to say no ma'ahum. Join them in doing what is good and right. Wa in asahu, if they are doing what is bad, and touch tenibu isa atahum. As a believer, you keep away from what is what is bad. A believer must always have principle, and the best principle is when you have patience. The first one is patience in the face of adversaries. The second one is patience in the face of events of life. The life presents itself in different ways, but to succeed, you have to exercise patience. The life may be likened to a road with bumps. 
That's how life is sometimes. A road with bumps. And uh, you are a driver, you are in a vehicle, and you want to pass through this road. You need a lot of patience if you must pass through it. And that's the nature of life. You can't attain anything good in life without perseverance, without patience, without tolerance. The same thing you can never attain Jannah without patience. Don't you see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who enter Jannah? In Quran chapter 13, that's Surah to Ra'ad. Verse 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابِ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ فَنِعْمَ عُقُبَ الدَّارِ Angels will be coming to congratulate those who have been admitted into paradise. They will be saying, Salamun alaykum. Peace be unto you. Bima sabartum. Because you were steadfast. Because of your steadfastness, Jannah is now yours. That is Jannah. Whoever wants Jannah, you know how to labor for it. The same thing if you want the good of this world, the success in this world, prosperity in this world, you must exercise patience. Sometimes you have fortune. But your fortune, you sometimes you may be in misfortune. But your misfortune could be changed to a fortune with good attitude, discipline, and courage. You must not succumb and you must not resign to fate when you find yourself in misfortune. A misfortune can only be a misfortune when you have given in to it. And a fortune can also be turned into a misfortune if you are not prudent in the way you uh, behave yourself whenever you are enjoying a fortune. So as a believer, we must always be patient, we must always be steadfast in the face of events of life. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Last night, my uncle gave me $500 to give to one of his friends in the mosque. He was going out of town and needed to get this to him by today. So I set out to Asr to meet him. It worked out well since I was planning on visiting a friend who lived near the mosque anyway. And it was, of course, a chance to also catch the prayer in congregation. I was scared and embarrassed. I didn't know what I would tell my uncle. It wasn't even about the money because I knew I could find a way to get that amount from somewhere if I really had to. But if my uncle found out, he'd be extremely upset. First I was scared, then confused, then just annoyed. I mean, where could it have gone? I then calmed myself down by remembering that the Prophet peace be upon him taught Allah has decreed and what he willed has happened. My being annoyed isn't going to bring back the money. And for now, I just need to find a way to get $500 to my uncle's friend. I still figured though that I should probably report it to the cops and hope for the best. So I decided I'd take the bus over to the police station. The other man taking the bus seemed really uncomfortable with me looking at me suspiciously as if I was up to no good. But I'd gotten that look before. And as usual, I simply smiled at him and greeted him the way I do with everyone else. He continued to stare at me with that same look, and I couldn't figure out why. It was like I was carrying a bomb or something. 
Then I noticed he kept looking at my bag. So I wanted to put him at ease. I pulled out a bag of dates and asked him if he would like some. He smiled and said I'd never eaten those before. I told him jokingly to give it a chance. I promise you they're not poisoned. So he hesitantly agreed, took a bite, and finally cracked a smile. The man asked me if I knew him because of the way I warmly greeted him. After all, strangers don't usually hand you dates to eat on a bus in America. I told him, no, I'm just Muslim and this is how we were taught to treat people. He then asked, what does the ring say? It looks like something I've seen Islamic terrorists wear on TV. I said it says Muhammad the messenger of God. And he was a messenger of peace. And so that led to an interesting conversation. I told him I've seen people kill in the name of Christ. But I don't blame Jesus, peace be upon him, for their actions. Likewise, our prophet and religion is free from those people. Interestingly enough, he admitted to me that he stereotyped me as well. He said that he saw me when I left the mosque and thought I was a terrorist because I put the bag on the ground and ran off. I laughed, then apologized, then explained to him that I was distracted because I just lost $500 and I was trying to find it before anyone else would pick it up. I honestly wasn't surprised by his perception of me. Let's face it, the media contributes to creating this distorted perception of Muslims. And if those were the only images we saw of Muslims, we would probably think the same. I told him that if he was really interested in understanding terrorism, he could read the FBI's 2005 report on domestic terrorism, which said that Muslims account for only 6% of the terrorist attacks carried out on American soil. I stress that violence has no religion and that our religion is one of peace, that we even greet each other with peace and that the word Islam is derived from the word peace. And anyone who reads about our prophet peace be upon him will know that he and his followers never sanctioned harming innocent people. And in fact, the Quran likened killing one innocent person to killing all of mankind. A man asked the messenger of Allah, which act in Islam is best? He said to feed the poor and to greet those who you know and those who you don't know. He also said smiling in the face of your brother is an act of charity. There are many sayings of the Prophet peace be upon him similar to these that completely contradict the image that's been painted of him. Islam is derived from peace. One of Allah's names is As-Salam, peace. And our greeting as Muslims is Salam, peace. Suddenly he tapped me on the back and said he figured out on the bus that the money belonged to me and admitted that he wasn't initially going to return it to me. But when I smiled at him the way I did, greeted him, offered him dates, and talked to him, everything he thought about Muslims slowly started to disappear, and he felt compelled to give me the money. So I thanked him for that, and he said I'm the one who should be thanked, for I taught him a valuable lesson today. We shook hands and he left, but I knew that his hand was not all that I had touched. Abdullah ibn Salam said that the first words he heard from the Prophet peace be upon him were, O oh people, spread peace amongst yourselves, and feed your poor, and pray at night as others around you sleep, and you will enter paradise in peace. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Yeah, on Ask the Muslim Street Quiz. So I'll be asking you three very simple questions. And if you get the three very simple questions right, as in very, very right, you stand the chance of going home with a gift from Harabel. Harabella, sir. She gave us those gifts from our shop. I wasn't when she was taking it. It was very good gifts. How are you ready? I am. For the questions or for the gifts? 
but the gift and the question. Or both of them? Mm, all of the above. All of the above. Okay, so let's go. Question number one. Which surah of the Old Quran is called the mother of the Quran? Fatia. Ah, ah, I'm scared though. Are you sure? Yes. That is gift too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're right, Sultan Fatia. Which surah was revealed twice? Do you want options? Yeah, I want options. You want options? Option A, Sultan Nas. B, a class. C, normal. D, Sultan Fatia. I think maybe it's right to a class or right to fatter. Final answer. <laughs> Final answer. Okay, let me go with right to fatter. Final answer. Yes, final answer. Sort of fatter. You were right. Sort of fatter was correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which surah mentions 27 attributes of Allah? Which surah mentions 27 attributes of Allah? Hmm, are there options? Do you want options? Yes. Okay, options. Option A, Saba. Option B, Hadith. Option C, Wakia. Option D, Rahman. This is a tough one. Ah, 27 attributes of Allah. Wakia, Saba, Hadith, and Rahman. Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. I think I'll go with Hadid. Are you sure? So what answer are you going with finally? Oh, great. I <laughs> hmm. Let me just... Okay, let's go with Saba. Ah, uh, final answer. I really don't. I really don't know what to pick. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go with. Let's go with Hadid. Yes, you were right. Hadid was the final answer, as the correct answer. Which surah's name is a palindrome, meaning that it reads the same forwards and backwards meaning that if you read it backwards it's the same as using it forwards back home do you like do you want option i want option <laughs> okay your options are option a as shams b al komor c ad Najim, d Lail. wait let me think okay the name of the surah that is read the same back and forward. Ashams, Al Komor, Ad Najim, Lail. Final answer. Final answer. So what's your answer? That's Al Komor. I'm not. No, uh, I want you to be very sure. Final answer. Final answer. Oh, you were wrong. It was Lail. L A I L. If you read it backwards, you get the same. Yeah. What is it? A surah's name in which if you read it backwards and forwards, it's, it's the same. It reads the same thing. Uh, okay. So, L A Y L now. Lay. Okay, it's not really the same thing, but about accept Okay. With surah is the name of a type of metal. I've asked you before. Are you sure? Yes, but you can tell me. No, mm, mm, mm. are you sure? Wow, I think I've gotten a winner. You were correct. She got three out of three questions. So you are going away with a gift from Arabel. <laughs> Which surah is the name of a type of metal? Which surah is the name of a type of metal? 
Is it in English? Like the meaning? Okay, can you give me option? Which one is options now? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> the options. Option A, Najim. Option B, Nal. Option C, Ujurot. Option D, Hadid. Hadid. Final answer. Final answer. Final answer. Hadid. Are you sure? You know you've already missed one. Wait, okay. What, what's, 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 what's the first option? First option is Najim. B, Nal. C, Ujurot. D, Hadid. Hadid, I'll go for Hadid. Final answer. Final answer. You were right. Hadid was correct. So you have two about three. Um, I would think about it if I would give you a gift. <laughs> but let me ask, how were the questions? The first one and the last one were very simple for me. But the second one was tough. I had to really think about it. In fact, I thought I'd miss that one. Yeah, for me, a few waffles. Well, it's Allah's Rahma. Okay, well. So um, on behalf of LTV from Arabel, I present to you this. Thank you very much for participating in Ask the Muslim Street Quiz. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum wa barakatuh. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. story of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Imam Abu Hanifa, obviously, you know, a great faqih of his time, and then after, people are coming to him for fatwa all the time, and his mother had a question, and she asked a question, so she, he told her the answer, and she said, you don't know anything. So your mother can say that to you, right? I'm going to go ask that one over there. And that guy that she wanted to go ask, he was a da'i. He wasn't a alim, he was a da'i. Da'i means he can give people a reminder, he can tell people about taqwa, but he doesn't know about fiqh or sharia or anything like that. So his mother goes and asks him. And he says, let me do some research, I'll get back to you. And he comes back to who? Abu <laughs> Hanifa. He was like, hey, your mom came over and she was like, she had a question. And he was like, okay, here's the answer, but don't tell her I told you. <laughs> right? Sometimes you will have people in your own family that don't like hearing from you. Maybe you became closer to the deen, but they're not that close to the deen. And that makes you angry. It makes you angry that some women in your family don't wear hijab. It makes you angry some young men in your family don't pray. You get mad at them. No, don't get angry at them. Speak with them peacefully. Speak with them calmly. Your anger will only take them further away from deen. They won't bring them closer. You know, you have to have a soft heart towards those who are not there yet. You were not praying five times a day. There was a time when you weren't like that. If somebody spoke to you angrily, would you start praying or go further away? Think about that. Think about that. Allah softened your heart. So you wait until Allah softens theirs and you have to be soft to people. I remind people that Allah Azza wa Jal told Musa alayhi salam to be nice to Fir'aun. To be nice to Fir'aun. Fir'aun tried to kill Musa alayhi salam when he was just a baby. Fir'aun killed thousands of babies every year. He called himself God. There are so many reasons to hate Fir'aun. And Allah says, when you go to him, وَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا If you have to be nice to Fir'aun, what about your wife? What about your husband? What about your children? What about your cousins, your brother, your uncle? These are the people that make us angry. These are the people. Family makes you really angry, I'm telling you. I know. Siblings make you angry. And these are the people that deserve the most soft responses from us. We have to change the way we, we behave with them.
Join us again tomorrow for more. After the uh, uh, Tharawi is something, just before I sleep, I always like Amala and Abula. Maybe three times or four times during the Ramadan, you know. What food do you like the most to break your fast with? If they give you that food every day of Ramadan, you keep breaking your fast with it. What food is it? Ebiriko. Ebiriko, no, no. Yes. Every day of Ramadan. How TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.